Good morning, everybody. So I um, actually had this tour filmed, was editing, was trying to save it, didn't have enough space on my, my phone, um, and was going through and deleting a bunch of stuff that I didn't need. <sighs> Thinking that this video was uploaded into the programmer that I was using, clearly it was not lost everything. So this is take two on the front garden tour. I had to go get coffee because I'm exhausted. Uh, traffic is picking up, so you're gonna hear that in the background as well. And then, um, let's just dive right into it. So, I always hope you guys, bleh. This caffeine needs to kick in. I hope you enjoy the tour. So we're gonna start off right here near the front door. We'll do a second video on this section a little bit later. But, let me re-steady myself so I can get the coffee in my other hand. Um, when we first moved in here, there was absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing to this property. And I'm going to put a, pose, a picture right up here on the screen for you to see. Um, so the first things I did was I started carving out the beds. Um, this was done in December. I started carving out the beds. We had a very mild winter. So it was something to do, considering we weren't starting on inside work yet we hadn't lived here enough to really know what we wanted but I knew I wanted a good entryway so I went in and I put in a total of I've never even counted this two four six eight ten there's ten on this side I think there's ten on that side or maybe nine two four six eight nine nine on that side um, boxwoods these are winter gems and they flank each side of the pathway it's still up in the air whether or not I'm going to um, Keep these in a round uh, spheres formation or if I'm gonna let these guys grow into each other and up um, I kind of like that they're round and they're actually due for a trim so we'll get into that one later when we decide but what I have on either side of the door here is Roseanne geraniums these guys are powerhouses these are a um, a sterile variety of geranium that bloom all season long. They usually pick up um, early early summer. They start putting on a few blooms and then they pick up and it is now October and they're still blooming. There's actually bees all over them, but um, the color is beautiful. It's a blue and purple um, kind of a mix as they go in and out, but you cannot beat these if you want ongoing color and a perennial. I'm um, coming up this way. I have the Wicked Witch um, coleus, which there's three plants in here. I, and I, I, yeah, three plants in here. Or is this two? I don't even remember anymore. Um, I think I, I knew I transplanted one of them, but these, these guys have, I just absolutely love how they flank the door. The only thing that I want to do different next year is push these back just a little bit and I will show you why. So you can see this big mound of gold rush Nephophia. This is from Walter's Gardens. We received these earlier in the year and they have been blooming non-stop for the last couple months. If you guys want an exceptional performer with a bright, bright yellow color and something interesting that most people don't have in their yards, this is a plant for you. So I planted these three right here and then I came back in and I moved a few from the backyard that were just kind of suffering in that lovely area. I decided to plant everything. It was junk. Um, but they're picking up, but hey, they're blooming, so they're happy. They're much happier up here. But I'm going to take these, and I'm going to move these over into this area where the hostas are, because the hostas clearly do not like this area. Getting too much sun, and I was kind of shocked by that. So I might, um, I'm probably just going to take these, um, I believe this is Sagay hosta, and these will go in the backyard into the shade, and then these will be moved over here, and that way I can bring and um, push back the Wicked Witch Coleus. So moving from that point, right down below we have Cat's Pajamas Nepeta, which um, has done impeccably well. This one is a transplant from a different area that wasn't doing so good, but it is rebounding. It's much happier over here, which will fill in this area, which I want it because it was a dead spot that I had some um, violas in the spring and just never really replaced anything there. They did they did keep going for quite some time, but um, in the end I did pull them out and then just left it blank. But you can see there'll be a nice little drift here. There's actually one up in there. And then right behind it is Millennium Alliums. 
And what I find interesting is, normally I would cut these back, but I've been appreciating um, the dying of plants this year. And what you can see, all those little black spots in the plant are actually seeds. So hopefully, 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 <laughs> they will drop and give me more. I actually see a weed right back here, a little pool. Stinking squirrels giving me elm tr elms or oaks. That looks like an oak to me. Anyway, um, but I'm hoping I'll get more Millennium Alliums out of this. They're, they've allegedly said they'll spread. I don't know how aggressively, but there's a lot of heads here and a lot of seeds. So here's hoping. Um, coming around this way, you can see this big behemoth of an area is black and blue salvias. There's about, I think there's five plants in this area. I am zone six. These are rated for like zone seven or below, um, or warmer, I'm sorry. And I'm trying to get my camera to focus on that. These are adored by bees, hummingbirds. The butterflies come in on this when they're here. Um, they are absolutely amazing. It is a true blue flower with the black calyx, calyx, however you pronounce it. But these guys are really picking up near the end of the season, which I absolutely love. It does take them some time to come out of dormancy and really start putting on some growth. But once they get going, they start putting on some blooms and then um, I give them a slight pinch and boom, they're off. And I get this beautiful display each year. Down here is Azure Blue um, by Proven Winner Salvia. It's a bicolor bloom. It is a purple and um, white right now. It's usually a little bit more periwinkle blue um, in its first flush. This was one plant, guys, that I divided um, this year because when we had it, um, it just kind of looked empty and weird just having one plant. And I was going to pick up more, but I'm like, you know what, I'll divide this. And I actually have five plants in this little drift now. And I like how it goes in and tucks behind the millenniums and gives it in this area a sense of depth. So right here where you see our lovely pumpkins, I'm still debating if I'm going to be doing any fall display here or not or just calling it a day. It looks weird with just the pumpkins. Um, but I absolutely love these. These are, um, I can't think of what the name is. Um, another pumpkin lots of extra pumpkin i don't know something but the striations on them are pretty cool um but this area was filled with super tunia bordeaux and it was a champ all this year until we started repairing our grass and the sprinklers kept hitting it every i think four to six hours just started rotting them out they started coming back and then we ended up doing more repair in the grass because there's some other spots that we we're starting to miss and it was just their final final fate um, so I ripped those out a couple weeks ago and now I've had this empty area but maybe a fall display right here are two delicious candy cone flowers I purchased these last year in like plug size they were literally in four inch cans like that and maybe plants this big and whatnot two to three blooms this year they have taken off and they it is massive um, they're actually trying to bloom again even though it's pretty cool out this is actually some of the blooms very deep pink um, double bloom absolutely love this and this is such a vigorous plant that i'm going to divide this in the spring next year and get at least one two three i'll have at least six to seven plants right here just from two plants which is awesome actually right behind it is adobe orange um it says salsa orange back there but these are adobe orange uh cone flowers and they're trying to come back into bloom again the tree right here is a butterfly jade dwarf ginkgo tree from Monrovia. I purchased this a couple years ago, had it put in a spot that I, um, at our apartment that was up against the wall that I needed some height to cover up the ugliness and was so happy that it transplanted beautifully this year. I absolutely love the leaf on a butter, uh, ginkgo tree here. And you can actually see they're starting to get yellow, which means they're going to turn bright yellow here soon. And then in a matter of a day or two, boom, all the leaves just drop. That is the one good thing about ginkgos, but the bad thing is you don't get that long lasting fall display. Surrounding that I have the knockout roses, which are the um, coral ones. 
which have done exceptionally well. These I gave a big prune to before I plant it in this area. And these guys have been going so strong and putting on so much more growth this year. There's one here, there, and then on the other side. And it's been a fantastic display. I'm going to give them a little shape up here in the spring. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the spring to um, give them a little bit more shape and get a little bit more of a display out of them. Because there will be more growth points. But it's been absolutely amazing. Draco has decided to come and visit us and try eating some of the grass. Um, speaking of the grass, this is Carly Rose. And this was an element that I really um, was happy to put in this bed because it was I was missing an element in this area and it was grass and that's something that gardeners tend to forget about or people that um, are just getting into gardening is where something just doesn't feel right and we don't know what to put but we have a bad misconception on grasses and curly rose is phenomenal I mean look at those rosy pink fronds and then when they dry they're still just so beautiful and that texture even with roses and the hibiscus, which is evening rose in the back, and it's still blooming here in October with that black foliage. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, pan down real quick, and we'll show you. I planted some Nicotiana lime green here that I had left over from seed trays. They were doing really, really well until the deer decided to come around and um, eat the tops off of, which is unfortunate because I don't have that color here. Um, moving up, the most talked about plant in this front bed is my cardoons. I grew these from seed back in April, and there's four plants in here. Three very strong ones, and one, eh, not so much, but he's still providing something to the group. These got a lot bigger than I had anticipated, and I would have never put them right here. Actually, I probably would have put them right over here, but, um... This has been the most talked about plant. Um, when people drive by that I know, they're like, what is this? What is this? It, it's just an ornamental artichoke. Um, I'm kind of shocked of how fast they grew that I didn't get a single bloom yet this season. Maybe, maybe there'll be some time, but the silvery foliage on the new fronds is beautiful. And then it's a gray green as it um, goes and gets older. Undersides are like a whitish color. Um, they do not get any spikes back here, but as you go down further into the leaf area, there are little daggers um, in this area. These are very thick, fleshy leaves. Um, my longest one so far has been about four and a half feet long, and these plants are getting to, I think, five and a half foot tall at this point. It's amazing. I definitely want to plant them again next year. These are rated zones seven to ten. I believe and um, with winter protection like a lot of mulch when these get hit by frost um, I might be able to save them in zone 6 so there's a lot of conflicting information on the internet of it so hey I mean from seed to this psh, I'll take the risk and I'll regrow them again next year for sure even if they do come back or if they don't um, but I kind of don't want them to come back in this area so we'll see Coming up, we have Truffula Pink Gumfrina, which um, was doing amazing. This whole area was flanked in it. It was a beautiful big drift of it. And then these guys decided, no, nah, we're the stars. Um, I have a sedum down here, which is obviously flopped because of this. And I have some starts underneath there. And then actually, I didn't expect the Gumfrina to really take off because just wasn't doing a whole lot up here and I had planted some penstemons which will definitely be back next spring but aren't these the most beautiful flowers I love these tubular the hummingbirds love them just really pretty what you see here is not black and blue salvia this is rock and blue suede shoes or something by proven winners I was not a fan of these in the beginning and, and we'll talk about that here in a second but I wasn't a fan of these um, in the beginning because they just were not doing anything. They weren't putting on any height like my black and blues. They just really stayed squat and I really wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Especially if I was trying to put them in the mid of the border and they claimed that they got really, really big and they just were not. They're starting to pick up a little bit, which is true to the species, this variety. Um, these are different from the regular salvias that we grow in our gardens. 
These will tend to put on a little bit more size um, as the season gets longer and cooler and this is about the time that they naturally want to bloom so they have been in color all season it's been great there's been blue flowers here um, i'm curious to see if these ones actually come back or not for me like the black and blues i'm not going to do anything different that i do with the other plants um, but it's a lot clearer blue it's not a i wouldn't it's i guess it's a true blue but i like the dark blue true true like the black and blues are almost have like a navy undertone. These have more of um, a clear blue, a little bit more white undertone to them. But anyway, um, these are starting to kind of suffer from the cold now. These are the Color Blaze Golden Dreams Coleus. When I first planted these, they were already pinched out, so I didn't really do anything more to them. I should have pinched them one more time to get a little bit more bushiness out of them. But in the end, it worked out best for me because how everything else filled out these are definitely a rock star plant for me and i will definitely be planting them again next year um, in fact i've already taken a few cuttings off of these and i plan to take a few more because i want to use these in other places um, i'm sure you're seeing the hydrangea heads bobble up top here um, i'm not for certain what the name on this one is but i know this one's strawberry vanilla by first editions plants these guys were in other places. I transplanted them when they were in bloom. They survived, but I'm not sure that I want hydrangeas up here. Shocker. I'll be the first person to say I'm not a huge fan of all hydrangeas. Um, so they may go. My window boxes look beautiful, don't they? You can't see this one. Um, and this one just looks like crap. I had big plans for these this year with deep moody colors of rich rich pinks and dark purples and blacks and silvers and it looked so good when I planted them and I don't have drip irrigation and I couldn't keep up with watering on them. I packed them far too tight. Um, so lesson learned, not doing that again next year, And but I will be trying that color palette one more time because I really want to see it in all of its glory. The Mystic Illusion Dahlias were um, one plant that I originally had and in the last video of the um, hotbed tour that I showed you, it was, there's three plants over there. These three, apparently there were bigger sections or had a lot better care, which I haven't done anything so I think it's more water. They're massive guys, they're massive, massive, massive plants. Um, but they have been blooming their heads off and everybody just comments how much they love them and I have to say for a person who's not a fan of yellow, I find yellow to be very garish and pulls focus, but it's like white. But these are these have been absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And then when these uh coral knockouts are in bloom, that pink against that black on the foliage as well, mixed with the uh the yellow is absolutely stunning. So I think this might be a permanent location, maybe only doing two. Maybe bringing one out to here. I'm not quite sure, but definitely have enjoyed how these have performed. This is a columnar blue spruce that um, I picked up earlier in the season, and it's been putting on a substantial amount of growth. It's actually put it on put on about 10 inches of growth, which is pretty good to me. I wanted something a little fast growing to really anchor this corner of the house. Um, step back and kind of give you an idea perspective wise. This one will get about. I think the tag said 20 or 25 foot tall, but it only gets um, 7 to 10 feet tall and wide, but I needed it to really anchor this corner of the house. The only thing that I think I would have done differently, and I could still do maybe an early, early um, spring, late winter, is pull it and bring it actually over to here. So I can kind of cover this area or bring it over just about this much so I know I have this area covered. Um, We'll see, maybe something will change, maybe it'll, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Um, back behind that is a very dark nine bark. I'm not quite sure um, what variety it is. I've had it for about two years now. Um, I've trimmed it and it's probably was not the best thing to do, but I want it, while I was experimenting with these, I wanted to see how the black and this blue would work together and it's phenomenal. Especially with the darker green, I hope it ties all it in, all of it in together, and then it really showcases the blue spruce here. Um, this is Desert Plains. Um, is it Penstemon? 
Penstemon? Yes. Penstemon grass by Proven Winners. Um, I was looking at the tag yesterday in the original video, and they're 48 inches wide. So, they're, um, and it says minimum spacing 36. Yeah, well, I'm about like 18 inches, so some of the, one of them's got to go at least. Um, poor planning on my part. I might just bring them out in this area because this whole area is going to get redone. Um, there's a few plants I didn't touch on. I'm so sorry. Statues Humulo that we got from Walter's Gardens. I think there's three, there's seven plants in here of these. These are phenomenal in the garden. Super low maintenance. Continuous bloom if you deadhead. They're actually just fading out on their last bloom, but it's a beautiful um, pinkish purple bloom. Um, great cut flower and tidy crinkly foliage. Look at that. The texture on the foliage is absolutely great. In this area, I had Royal Magenta uh, Petunias, and they did extremely well until we were repairing this side of the lawn. I sheared them back hard, really, really hard. Like, you would have never thought there was a plant here. Gave them some juice for a couple weeks. Boom, they were full back in bloom. We repaired the grass again, and they fizzled out. So... I, I'm, I mean, I had a good display. I'm at the point where I really want to tidy up a lot of stuff. So, like, a lot of the annuals, I'm ready to actually start pulling, believe it or not. Um, in this area, in the spring, there's Amsonia Storm Cloud by Proven Winners that blooms in here. It's a very light blue. Um, so, I'm hoping those will bulk up. I think I have four or five of them in there. You never know because of how big the annuals have gotten. Um, this is a Nepeda from Monrovia. It is called... Well, I got it on clearance, I'll tell you that much. What is this? Nep Neptune? Neptune Catamint. Um, they get a little bit bigger blooms on them, and the um, foliage is a lot bigger, more like of a salvia type. Um, they're, they're pretty long lasting. Um, I think if had I sheared them back and given them a little bit of time to reform some new buds, like they're starting to want to maybe rebloom again. Um, I would have gotten a little bit better earlier display, but you win some, you lose some. I actually had one from the previous year, so I cut it back and it's regrowing and I had another one, but I think I caught it too late. It was too much in despair. Um, so it kind of might come back and then right here is fanglo a burgundy lobelia um this one's definitely burgundy for some reason i'm getting a very red shoot out of this so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to pull that because lobelias will cross and i do not want um the possibility of any seeds coming about this is not going to focus hello over here um if they were to reseed because I don't get to cleaning them up, I don't want um, reversion back. Puff has spotted me. He's out on potty break on his leash, so he won't be up here, but he's dying too. Um, I had started some lupines from seed. There's actually a few more under all that that have now gone. But lupines from seed, um, they kind of struggled in the beginning, but they seem to be rebounding quite nicely. A couple salsa red cone flowers. I divided this one up and probably could have done the same with this one. Key note when it comes to designer cone flowers is if you go in and deadhead them, not deadhead them, but um, divide them every three to four years, you'll increase the vigor and create um, longer lasting plants because echinacea are normally short lived plants short-lived perennials, so giving them um, a quick divide will actually encourage them to grow on and on for more years to come. So it's a little bit um, of a t reminder, but like a plant that's this big, I would divide this in the spring, and I'll have more plants this big, and then for the next couple years, I'll have bigger and bigger plants and more and more flowers. Um, this is Wizard of Oz, Veronica, that I got on clearance that were horrible looking horrible i shared these really really back and then um gave them some juice some fertilizers and they rebounded amazingly and they're actually this is i think the second bloom set since um then next year i'm sure it'll be an impressive display just not right now 
a wild verbena bun ariensis that came um, as a seed when I brought these over from our apartment. This stuff is everywhere, but I absolutely love verbena bun ariensis. So airy, and then see it with the grasses. Ugh, it's perfection. This is Denim and Lace Salvia. I actually just picked up, um, I think, four more, and I had three, so I have a total of seven now. Um, and these are actually going to get relocated to the driveway bed because that area is a lot more drought. A little bit more drought. A little bit, oh God, what are the words I'm looking for here? A little bit more... I need some more drought-resistant plants over there, and these will definitely appreciate that versus the clay soil that they're in now. They'll get through, and they'll be fine for the next year, but they're definitely going to appreciate the more um, free-draining soil over in that area. These are just some random stuff. I believe these are just some random blue salvias that I picked up. And let me let me point out something. And I'm not going to sit here and lie about something or promote something I don't believe in. But this is an older variety of salvia. And uh, Veronica, I'm sorry. And you can see all the spotting. Come over here and you barely see it. There's very little over here in this Veronica, which is really great. Better disease resistance and clearly longer blooming because these ones had the same treatment and they're not in bloom. Scared the hell out of me. Ugh. So excuse that moment. Um, Rob actually had came out and Puff was coming near me and I didn't even see Draco was right in front of me. Came flying out of the plants for some reason and just scared the living daylights out of me. So I had to stop, had to regroup. Um, and then we had to have a quick talk about something that had just gone on last night. Um, but let's get back to the garden tour. I keep looking over here because of the red dot that the play button hits. I need to create a red dot for on this side because this is where the lens is and I can talk to you that way. Note to self. So we'll finish this up this area real quick. Um, this is an area that I just kind of threw together and clearly have neglected. Um, it's just been a menagerie of stuff that has just needed to get out of my way and I wasn't sure where in the landscape it was going to go. So, you know, why not put it in somebody's face, you know, right up front. But here are some Zeg Rab Coreopsis. These guys can be somewhat of a thug in a way, but they are such long lasting color in a garden. They're every bit worth it. Sorry for the very noisy truck going by. Um, but I absolutely love them and I think they're going to stay actually right in this spot. Behind those I have Montauk Daisies. Believe it or not, I don't like Montauk Daisies. Um, they're getting ready to explode with color. These were pruned back super, super hard. These were every bit maybe that much taller and I took them down and they've put on all this fresh new growth. You can actually see some of the points that I have cut, um, which was advice from a friend. I didn't know I could cut these back, um, but I treated them like a mom and did it anyway, and it actually paid off. So I'm gonna let them go. I'm gonna let them be. Here's me starting to weed, I gotta stop. Um, some junipers that I picked up on clearance for like $3 each. If all else fails, just let them fill in this area. I think they get like between forward and six feet tall and six to eight feet wide so this area will be just nice and junipery and I'm okay with that one less area I got to maintain um, I'm gonna lift this I'm not quite sure if he actually went back in here but the other day I had came over to take a rock out of this area much larger one and there was a gardener snake under here not today um, so I kind of created a little hut for him. I am all about having gardener snakes in my yard. They are good for um, rodent control. They are good for pest control. They do crickets. They do um, small rodents. And they will take down grasshoppers and such as well. And they, they don't bite. They don't bite you unless you really mess with them. Um, so don't, don't be afraid of them. They are terrified of you and they will run in a second. And I actually had a huge one in the yard the other day. Scared the hell out of me, but I like them. This is an aster that's out of bloom. I really wanted to see what color they were. And they are this hot pink, which it'll get moved. And then I have this beautiful blue one. This one has been super long lasting. Um, I think this one might be just in a little bit more drier area. But you can see, this is the one downside of asters. Um, they do get some powdery mildew. Um, this also is affected by the fact that I do a lot of overhead watering. 
But needless to say, once they're covered in blooms, do you even notice it? Do you even notice it? I mean, why are we so hard on plants for certain things? If they're not putting on a big display, sure, you'll see it. But if they're not, I mean, if they're putting on tons and tons of blooms like this, you don't even notice it. I don't. I don't even worry about it. I don't even treat for it. But, yep, powdery mildew, not a big deal to me. This one is actually probably going to get moved, maybe. I'm not sure yet. Some old school red hibiscus. Um, we talked about the juniper. A uh, coreopsis, one of my clients gave me that didn't want it. A daylily I didn't care for. Probably just give it away, get rid of it out of here. A stake that I cannot get out of the ground. I don't know where these keep coming from. I've encountered so many of them. I'm probably just going to cut it flush to the ground and call it a day. Put a rock here so I know not to mess with it. And then, no, I did not plant this, but this is a locust tree. And I am actually here for it. I love locust trees, and I might dig this one up and plant it out back somewhere. But weeds galore. Needs mulch. Needs edge. Um, but that is going to wrap up this tour. I don't think I mentioned that. This is a climbing rose. It's an orange one. I don't know the name of it. The tag is out in my shed with my, all my other tags of everything that I've planted this year. The plan is to also have that climb up, possibly this way or just on the corner of the house and let it do what it wants. But hopefully we'll get to painting the house before um, that gets any bigger. But it's put on about two feet of growth. It was nothing but a nub, bare root. So not bad for clay soil and neglect. But I'll pan back out so you guys can get a good overview of the bed here from different angles. Obviously, got some area to plant. Some of this stuff will be gone, so it's going to be rather empty. Need to work on a little bit of winter interest, so I need to get some more evergreens in this area. Not many, not that big of an area. But I'll talk to you here once we get over there about the direction that I really want to go with and it's this area. I absolutely love how this area came out with the layers on everything. Definitely need to add some more grass texture for that contrast. Bloom times are on point in this area and I will leave this area open for annuals because it's a nice spot to um, have that bright pop of color and I will not not go without the coleus right here unless I can find um, a small shrub that I like that has that dark foliage. I think it would be really, really great. But I'll leave you with a couple photos of the house before we got it um, and what we've accomplished since December 4th of 2019. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Hakt den alla av